Hello everyone. This is the first episode of 20 plus 6 Cell Sword School. I decided to go ahead and make some videos about the basic concepts of 20 plus 6 and how it operates and how you can use it to tell various kinds of role-playing tabletop games. Cell Swords is our heroic fantasy game. That's a game that's based in worlds like uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs' uh, Barsoom trilogy, which some people know as John Carter of Mars. It's stories like Cull of Atlantis and the Hyborian Age of Robert Irwin Howard. It could even be some bordering on high fantasy settings, such as uh, Michael Moorcock's Elric. But typically it is a setting where there is magic and there is weirdness, but it's not as prevalent as it is in, say, a dungeon-crawling-centric game. <clears throat> this doesn't mean you can't have the big high fantasy effects in the setting. It just means they're rare or there's more required to get them off, usually some kind of component or rare ceremony. Most of the game actually focuses on, I guess the best word for it would be skulldaldry. Doing nasty, gritty, gray things in the shadows. And that, to me, is what always intrigued me about heroic fantasy more than, say, Dragonlance, Forgotten Realms, and things like this. Although those settings certainly have their gray element to them, heroic fantasy is basically film noir with sabers. And I've always found that intriguing. So this is a depiction of the basic things you'll need to run a 20 plus 6 session. What we have here is called the packet. Every player should have a packet. The packet has on the front page what we call the uh, main matrix of results. When you roll a result or a test, you compare your roll to this front page and it tells you how great of a success you got or how severe of a failure. The packet contains within it various things that are world specific called submatrixes. Submatrixes determine if there's any extra benefit to an action. Uh, let me pull one up here real quick. Like uh, here's a very popular one called the kill test. This is something we do on extras. Rather than roll a standard damage test, most extras roll on this table instead to speed up gameplay. You might also have an exceptional skill roll and there might be things that aren't readily apparent at first, such as if you're interrogating someone a certain degree of success, uh, DOS, D-O-S, which you're going to be hearing a lot, not to be confused with the computer term, will allow you to do certain special effects to the target you're interrogating, such as trip them up, catch them in a lie, deceive them, make them make a confession, those kind of things. So, uh, the packet is the universal tool that everybody should have along with the, what the system is named for, at least 1d20 and 1d6 for each player. You might actually want to default to having each player bring 2d20 and 2d6, uh, they're often only rolling one. Most of the time players will roll a single d6, but on any roll of a 19 and 20, let me pull up a 19 here real quick. Well, I'll just go ahead and go to a 20. You roll a d6 and you add it. Oh, hey, 20 plus 6, where well, there you go. Some advantages will allow players to roll a d6 whenever they roll a lower score, and then they can add it so they have a higher minimum score. They may roll two bonus dice and keep the best one. Or, at high-level skill advantages, they may roll 2d6 and 2d20 and keep what they feel are the best results of both for their final result. But that's a very high level advantage in the game. Over here you see the whiteboard, things to draw on the whiteboard with, erasers, rulers, measuring tape if you're doing something more like a war game session. And over here you see a pre-drawn five foot battle map. That means that the tactical scale of this battle map is one square equals roughly five feet. Miniatures, which are purchasable from any hobby store, are used. I also tend to use chess pieces, particularly for extras. It just helps speed up play, makes it easier to move. I might also occasionally use dice as bad guys. Then we have the main feature that is common in every 20 plus 6 game, in addition to the rolling system, the Well of Fate. The Well of Fate, in this case, is an old felt hat. I like to use poker chips that are color-coded to the results on my chart. This makes it easy because if I want to get a certain kind of result, I simply look up the color code, I throw that chip into the hat, and I have that result. Ideally. On some rolls, such as attack rolls and damage rolls, one cannot simply just do that as it would unbalance the game. Instead, you add what's called an AV, an acting value, to the total you're trying to make happen. And then you roll in the appropriate column. The main thing to remember about the Well of Fate is that when the players begin the game, they draw three chips from the Well of Fate blind, unless they have special advantages that allow them more, or disadvantages that require less. 
In addition, every time the players roll what's called an epic success, which is a particular type of DOS, they draw a chip from the Well of Fate. Whenever they roll a fumble, which is a particular kind of severely failure of DOS, the Sage, the person running the game, draws a chip. And finally, whenever the Sage gives the group an idea or they're stuck, the Sage may take a chip. Whenever some player does something incredibly insightful or particularly um, role-playing appropriate or makes the group laugh, the Sage should feel free to give them the basic success chip of a white chip. Now, I've color-coded this to a common set of poker chips that you can find in anywhere. I bought my set at Walmart. But it could be colored beads. It could be um, pebbles. It could be anything that's easy for you to move. I even know one person that used a system similar to this that rather than use poker chips like the game suggested, he used colored marbles. Okay, so that's all the accoutrement that you will need. Let us get to how the game is actually played.